called Mr. Fury. It's called Mad Dad. Welcome to How Do You Fit a Scorpion Exhaust to a Kawasaki. This is an ER6F. Whoa. It is a 2010, which is a revised version of the bike. It's showtime. What you're going to need is something to catch drips of oil. Why am I talking about oil? I'm going mental. Alright, let's start this again. You're going to need a jack. Now jack the bike up, make sure you've got plenty of room to work in. Make sure you're wearing overalls because you're going to get dirty clothes if you don't. And make sure you wear boots because you don't want your little toes to get crushed should anything happen. If you're going to put the new exhaust on the floor before you mount it, make sure have some soft so we don't scratch it. This is a panic stand. This is what I use to jack up the motorcycle. Do you see these? These are called something. I don't know what it's called. It's got a name. That's all you need to know. It's got a name. And they go into the frame. And what you do is take this panic stand. Right? You need to have the bike upright. It's difficult to do it on your own, but somehow you can do it. Luckily, I have the help. Uh, you need to get the bike upright, you need to take the pegs down, you need to line it up with these pegs. Um, and what you need is to be as straight as possible. You need these to go onto the pegs. And then it'll be kind of like this upright position here. And you need to push down and it will slowly lift the bike up. Lift the bike up. And then your bike is now in the air, jack up, okay. So, first problem you need to work on. So, you need to take off this lower fairing underbelly. You're gonna have torques here, same either side, and then you need to take off these plastic debris, plastic debris. Uh, you're gonna need a screwdriver or a trim Movable tool. I usually use a screwdriver, and you've got two underneath as well. Now I'm kind of hoping I can get away with taking off the one, but you might have to take off the two. It's all down to learning and to the end of the day. So let's take off these ones first. All right, just before you start to take off the old exhaust, what I would suggest is take photos of where this was originally positioned. Because if you need to put the old one back on and you can't remember what it was like, how much clearance you have here from the tyre to this tip, well, you're not going to remember, it's just going to make your life more difficult. So, photos will help you if you need to put the, exhaust, the original exhaust back on the Kawasaki. Something to think about, guys. Something to think about. Something to think about! It's very serious. A bit of humour in this video, I'm trying to. Uh, give you guys, but uh, might work for you, might not. Works for me. That's what matters. What's the square head called? It's called Torx. You need to get a Torx. Mm, smallish, ratchet, or medium ratchet, whichever one suits you. Do that, it just makes taking the sound a little quicker rather than you should be able to see on the camera. See this washer there? Clear plastic washer, it stops the bolt from damaging the plastic or the paint. This one, it's gonna have it, do not lose it. And so at these tiny little torques, they will have the same washer, don't lose it. When you're taking out bolts, keep them all together, try and keep them organized. So when you put, back, put them back in, it can make your life easier. If you can, when you're doing this sort of stuff, get a kneeling pad way more comfortable than what I'm having to do. Get a flathead screwdriver and this should be able to see it. And here you're gonna have like a nib. A little nib and out, you have a outer and an inner part of this plastic rivet and what you want to do is pop out the outer part and then this will come out. So you've got to get it in right in there and then push and then this is docked and you just got to pull it out 
There you go. So, I have decided to try and be cheeky. I'm going to get off. I'm going to get off one of these. Oh, oh. Alright, let's do this. Yes. I'm going to take off one of the belly pans and see if I can do the oil and filter change just with the one. And if that doesn't work, I won't have to take off both, both parts. It's just what you have to do. Next, you need to take off these. And one of the bolts is going to be different to the others. So when you take this out, have these ordered. So the fairing bolts, they again have a plastic washer. I just pushed the bolt through the paper. And that's how I'm going to keep these bolts ordered. Take this piece of paper, take this panel takes a really good wiggle. It's down to have these clips, it's supposed to go underneath the bike and then slot in behind the green part of the fairings. To do the scorpion, I need to take both of the fairings off. The reason why you need to take the fairing off is the oxygen sensor is on this side. Make sure your side stands out of the way. You take off the belly pan. You just do exactly the same as you did the other side. get the filter sorted out. So what you need to do this this piece here is a link pipe. I believe yeah the plant was positioned about here ish. Feel free to take a photo just for a reminder so you need to take the clamp off the link pipe. Next you are gonna need to take this sensor out. This is very expensive so just ease it out. This, oxygen sensor. Take your time with that sensor. You need a 22 size spanner. Dad's playing arena pallet. Can we get a hammer and smack it? So that unit there is the O2 sensor. You've got to be careful with it. This is made out of some very easy to shatter materials inside it. And that's it. It's just a sensor. We are doing the last two bolts that are located. Probably can't see it on the camera, but it's in there. Let's go position it, and it's right there. And those two bolts are holding the exhaust in place. And that's what you need to remove. But, you've got to make sure the sensor's out, the clamp's out, because once this drops, it's going to take anything else. Can you see where this comes through? Not, not the one I'm working on, that one there. Yeah, you need to get the spanner on there and just hold it. Yeah. All about shapes when you work on motorcycles or cars. It's all about the shapes. It's a bit fucking mental, to be honest with you. Because there's, like, no room to work with. There's one out. Okay, so here comes the one I want you to get spanner on. Yep. Holding it. Yep. I've got the nut. I'm going to pull the bolt out you. Ready to go. Bolt is coming out. That gigantic great big bolt. Now, this is it. Oh, yeah, oh. So now this is loose. I'm going to move the camera over. See that link pipe? So you need to take the exhaust and wiggle it off this link pipe. Take your time. 
Fucking hell. Do you want me to... Yeah, get that wiggle. It's coming. It's, it's not... It's, it's, uh, broke. Mark it like it was a baby. Not, not this way, that's too easy. Do, do yeah. up and down. And... Yeah, it's just coming. Wow. Whoa. There it is. Oh. Heavy. Well, heavy, and look, that is a different design to my old uh, Kawasaki. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it has, like, this material around the end of this link pipe. That is interesting shit right there. But, put your finger in it. It's not that black. Efficient engine. This is the Scorpion. Although the manufacturer says you don't have to do any remapping, you don't have to do any rejecting if it's a carbon motorcycle, they call this OEM Plus. Stainless steel. Let's take a look. Mm -hmm. So this is a Scorpion, that is the pipe, nice pipe, and you've got, it's like a wrap around bracket that holds in place, we have clamps, we have washers, the bolts and nuts, we have two clamps as well, two of them, and then we've got an actual mount. So now you have to figure out how this all works and how this all works. So, do you see this bracket? It's black. It's got a weird shape to it. I don't know. Scorpions work around what the original exhaust had before. Keep box. Same as the original. This sort of position here. Same as the original. On the back of them we have monolock nuts. So this is what holds the bracket in place. You need a bowl. So the scorpion didn't supply it. I expect you just to have magic out of your ass. A bolt that goes through here like the original and then the nut to hold the bracket in place. That scorpion didn't provide the bolts and nuts that we needed so luckily got our own but most of you are going to find yourselves in a position where you go to fit this and the instructions state use existing where possible where, where not supplied is exactly right in. Uh -huh. but the problem is the existing that's left over is this and this yep. and you can't use any of these with a scorpion it's just pointless so uh, it doesn't help so it's okay, we'll just use our own. Not the easiest place to work on. Sometimes you just want to be able to flip a bike upside down and work on it and then flip it the right way up again. Yeah. Right, obviously it's an exhaust so we need this to be as safe as possible. So if you were in YouTube land are doing this to your own ER6 and you're not don't have access to an industrial environment like we do, then uh, you know don't expect to take your bike apart and go to work the same day on that bike. Make sure you've got enough time. Okay, your side is gonna require a 10 mil there to hold it. So this is on the right hand side of the motorcycle, you need, what is it, a 12 mil socket, ratchet, spanner, and you need to nip the nut and the bolt at the same time in both of these, and then do it for this one on the left hand side, and the mount is secure. God, it's got original Japanese writing on the engine. It's got original Japanese writing on the engine, has yeah, it? Yeah, you should check it out. Mm. <coughs> and people wonder why motorcycle mechanics are so expensive, but we you know we spend the time. Mm. No job is ever straightforward. And so on the the one we've had to use our own box instead of it being twelve, it's ten. Yes, I'm using washers. Cool. It's an exhaust mount, so 
you want to make sure everything's as tight as possible. It's got my spanner. Get my spanner back. Make sure everything's as tight as possible so that there's little chance of anything falling off or you having to get halfway to work and struggle. Right. Reason why you've got to be uh, not messing around with stuff like this is because imagine if the exhaust light came off and you're on the tilt carriageway or you're doing 40 or you're doing it's going to go don't hit the rear tire you're going to wiggle out of control and bang and the floor and destruction and uh, you've not only fucked your motorcycle but you're in hospital so you have got to be serious about these things it's underneath the camera thank you I would say we need to just gonna mount the vado. Yes, we need to bang this little pop in. It's got finger finger marks already guys, finger marks on the scorpion. Overlink hey, pink. So I hope you guys are watching this. Clamp, it's at the bottom of the clamp, it says W2. Clamp onto the end of the scorpion and put the link pipe and then with the, the biggest end, like this right a bit, biggest end into the scorpion. The battery's about to die! This bracket has a really strange orientation. Uh, it's not doing that. Definitely goes over. What we decided to do, we need to put on these clamps. Okay. They're both the same, yeah, they're both the same, of course. Uh, little pipe, little clamp on first, on this end of the link pipe, and then the big clamp on this end of the link pipe that goes into the scorpion and just a bit of trivia for you guys uh, I don't know why I, can't, I don't know why scorpion couldn't be bothered to design it so this bit would be back on there but this was on the downpipe the factory fitted now why was that there I don't know but there's a reason why scorpion knocking you down for that one should have been able to get around that but nope Bothered. Now the scorpion's going on. Requires two hands to do this properly. So I need to assist. Recording. Just to update you on the status, we've actually got the scorpion in place. In the difficult the point. part is manipulating this onto the bottom. And what we found is in the destructions you'll see the orientation of the exhaust pipe shows the logo yeah facing but now we're doing the opposite and one of the reason we're doing the opposite is because the exhaust gases would be thrown upwards and onto the frame of the bike so it's no good so we've adjusted it so the exhaust gases come out and away from the bike so you'll say it's upside down, we'll say it's properly fitted. Yeah. We've seen this before on the R6Ns where we've done this job before and then it's burnt. Swing on. It's not cool. So Luke's just going to tighten these up. So you have the big clamp. You need to make sure the clamps are over the cutouts. Nice well. So it is sealing over these two pieces. Uh, next, you need to do the smaller one and again make sure the clamp position it over the cutouts as tidy as you can make it to be honest with you okay town mill uh, I like this because it's a screwdriver but it has a, a socket on it so it's just easier to deal with it's easier, easier to use because with the ratchet you see you have to swing it you have to go whereas this one is just a straight rotate with your bloody hand basically and it's just really fucking simple so, uh, right, tighty, lefty, loosey. Uh, let's just make sure you're happy with that. Yeah, I'm happy with that. And keep tightening until it is as tight as it's going to be. This is effectively the scorpion now mounted 
pipes all connected, clamps where they should be, job done. Um, the only thing I didn't realise when me and Dad started talking about this exhaust is that even though it's... You actually look at it right, I thought that these came with a little catalytic converter piece like the original. Okay, and the reality is they fucking don't. Which means this no longer has a catalytic converter. Which isn't what I wanted, but, you know, because then it's not how Kawasaki would have designed the exhaust system. Seems you just can't have it your way sometimes, but, uh, nip it up. Get it nice and tight, make sure you nip it up, make sure you're happy with it, and then move on to the next problem, the next bit you need to put on. And look. Clearly, Scorpion can be bothered to design around that. They just can be bothered. Uh, that is this piece of the bike. That's securing it on. This is the exhaust. It's a good clearance. It's not moving anywhere. That is not going anywhere. Okay, I can get my hand in there. It's facing away from the frame, away from the motorcycle. So, again, here's the example of in the picture that they've yep. given us. The Scorpion logo is at two o'clock, okay, yes. uh, and it shows it blowing up towards the frame. So what we've done is rotate it so we've got a nice S there, and we don't have the exhaust gases going this way. We have them coming out. See the difference it makes. And we've seen this before because we fitted these before yep. to ER six ends, and it scorched all of the back, the rear swing arm, this way when she's piping hot. You also got to think that Kawasaki never made the original to do that, to put the exhaust gases on the f to blow it towards the frame. They designed it to go out, away from the motorcycle. Fitting the O2 sensor. We need to get that off. But because we haven't disconnected it on this bike, we're going to give it a twist or three in the direction we intend to tighten it up in. And the reason we're doing that, which I feel horrid about doing, is so that when it's tightened up, I'm gonna, it should go, otherwise I should then find another way, it should be straight then, shouldn't it? Two sensors are never straightforward. Ask any mechanic how much they enjoy doing that O2 sensor, and they'll tell you the same. They hate that. They love it. <laughs> now, lovely, no twists. Oh, I'm so pleased because if that had been twisted, I would have pulled it out and done it again. There's nothing worse than having a twist in O2. Nicely sealed, not cross threaded. Beautiful. Sometimes I appreciate guys when you go to a garage and you moan about how much it costs to do. You see how time consuming all this is? Oh, can you fit the scorpion for me? I bought it, yeah. Labor. Oh, how could it be that much? You do it yourself and see how you feel. Think you'll fucking struggle. And understand that actually. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it depends how much time you got on your hands, doesn't it? It's you know nobody right. seems to appreciate how expensive mechanics tools are for a start. And you know you can use your Halfords professional set to great effect. They're good to tooling, but you know it's got to be a blue point stroke snap on for your primaries. Um, and the time it takes, like you say, and the professionalism of you know. Simple things like that. F simple things like that, rather than handing a motorcycle back with uh, a twisted O2 sensor but feed you know, wire. What the gonna hell? Hit a, a really bad pot. Oh, what's the wiring going to do? It's a shock. You know, what, it's all just going to be twisted and horrible, but that's lovely. I'm really pleased. So it's putting in that extra bit of attention to detail that, you know, hand the bike back as tidy as you can. But, you know, I'm sure somebody who can do it but, with his mates in his back garden, and that's great. Yeah. But, for a lot of people, they just want it 
to click on like Lego. It there doesn't, you go. Though, it doesn't. No, it never does. But you know, unless it's from the manufacturer. But least, even then, at least we no get all shitty about it and start throwing a wobbler. We just yeah. crack on with it. You find a fault. Get about it. One of the other things, guys, is. Who cares, isn't it, Dad? Who cares? No one cares. I do. No, we do. I'm not sure about anyone else. And God, this doesn't have a cat. That's a shame. And why am I get a guy? Because, you know, these days, like, everything is managed by a little computer. It's called ECU. And it has parameters. Yeah, it has sensors and it expects everything to be a certain way. Once you change a variable, like, I don't know, pre back pressure and the exhaust has changed, all of a sudden the exhaust. 4 mil socket for these ones. You need to put them, put them back in. These are torques. Try and put them in the same order as they came out. Make your life a lot easier. You've got torques here as well. Tighten that up. Whenever you tighten stuff up like this, what you need to do is do it hand tight. Just to show you. Hand tight. I'm not going to put too much strength into it. And that's pretty damn tight. Powers like this, you don't torque them up. There's a chance you'll crack the plastic. You'll Cave in the paint too much. Lots of things can happen. That is very secure. So, next stage. Scorpion gave us this spacer for this panel, but we'll see how we get on without it. So, what we need to do is just line this puppy up. You're going to have to. Gonna have to line up these shapes and fairings that line up here, line up here, and you might just have to push this in slightly. Why would you just work with these? Panels are a fiddly business. So you've not only got a uh, Scorpion as well. Yeah. The panel doesn't quite fit. So, this goes under the plastic and between the metal. Under the plastic. So, uh, unfortunately, Scorpion, I'm going to have to mark you down for a bit of incompetence. Uh, so, what has happened is we've made the exhaust point the right way, and it's looking good, but bearing here is touching the exhaust. You should be able to see it in the video. But because of that, right? This means that you can't fix the fairing in place because it's touching that. So what we've had to actually do is get a file and file the edge. So there's less material and then it's not touching. But shouldn't have had to do that. That's disappointing. It's supposed to be factory. Just a quick mention. It's passing by this Kawasaki. This is a Zenix R. The 900. Very green, isn't it? For an older bike, still looks fairly modern. You can knock it. It's meant it's very quick. Only heard owners like my dad's ZX9. It was a ballistic little missile. This a mental bike. Nice ones are the ones that have turbo fit on. The way we. The little rascal has spirit. That's awesome.
This is the end of the trail for me. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, kid. Yeah.